Hey, babies. I know, I'm late, 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 late for chapter 14. If I remember what I read before. If you don't remember, you can always go back and re-listen. I'm reading two other books. Besides this one, not of this series. They're so good. I have to tell you about them later. Okay, chapter 14. It's never a good day when someone shoots at you, but on the upside, Ainsley is safe at home and not being held against her will by Rory Bombay. Always a good thing, too. I need a decent cup of hot chocolate and an extravagant pastry to help me process all this information. Next stop, bless you, patisserie. On 3rd Avenue, the crowd is thinner than expected for the afternoon rush, but the proprietor, Ann, is bustling around as though the line stretches around the corner. When I get my turn at the counter, I order an extra-large Mexican hot chocolate. Never had one of those. And a chocolate croissant. You seem awfully busy. You wouldn't happen to have time to teach a girl how to make a pie, would you? She chuckles, and her eternal smile shines on me. I'd be happy to teach you how to make a pie. Eleven months out of the year, Mitzi, but November isn't one of those months. I have orders for rhubarb, pecan, apples, strawberry, and rhubarb pies longer than both my arms and legs, and every single one of them it went away. It just went black, and my battery's good. What is going on? Hold everything. Maybe we'll get that. Come on, I made two nesting baskets. You saw one, but I finished the other one today, the bigger one. I finished two baskets in a week. Okay, what happened? Okay. Uh, and every single one of them has to be baked and boxed by this Wednesday, but I tell you what. If you'd like to place an order, I'm happy to tell everyone you baked it yourself. Her kind accommodation always surprises me. I'd like to order a pumpkin, but I'm not sure how many people will be there. Is one pie enough? She sets my chocolate croissant on a plate and shakes her head playfully. One pie is never enough. If you're headed out to Twiggy Shindig, you better take a pumpkin and an apple. I happen to know that's her favorite. My mouth waters at the sight of the croissant. You know everything that happens in this town, don't you? We share a chuckle, and I confirm my order for the two pies. Hey, on the topic of knowing everything, what do you know about the McClintocks and their dairy farm? For the first time since I stumbled into her pat patisserie, <laughs> if I say that right, the smile on her face fades. That was some bad business. My extrasensory antenna, ting, antennae, antenna, antenna, tingle with anticipation. Something bad happened out at the farm? She glances at the short line behind me and leans across the counter. Give me a minute to take care of these folks and I'll stop by your table. No problem. I pay for my snack and pie order and take the croissant to a corner table. A few minutes later, Annie appears with a beautiful mug of Mexican hot chocolate topped with a healthy portion of whipped cream and a gentle sprinkling of cinnamon. She sets the mug on the table without spilling a drop and takes a seat opposite. Mrs. McClintock was attacked when Ainsley was a little more than a year old. They never caught the man responsible. Rumor has it. He was one of the hired hands and has moved on, as the seasonal workers always do. Poor Clyde found his daughter wandering down the dirt road and came home to find... Well, best not talk about it. Mrs. McClintock was in the hospital for almost two weeks. Clyde has never been the same. He got real, you know, protective. 
So he shoots at everyone that shows up unannounced. Anne claps her hand on the table and leans back wide-eyed. You went out to the farm? Ainsley didn't show up at class today, and I wanted to make sure she was all right. Her broad smile returns, and she chuckles as she points to my wig. Oh, well, that explains the get-up. What do you mean? You know how folks talk in a small town. I've heard a story or two about you wearing disguises and going undercover to solve, to solve crimes. When you do good, word gets out. I'm trying my best to do good, but I'm not having any luck proving Eric's innocence. Anne reaches across the table and squeezes my hand. We all know he's innocent, sweetie. You'll figure it out. I have as much faith in you as I do in my grand great grandma great grandma's patashu recipe she pats my hand maybe it's pate a shoe anyway she pats my hand and returns to her kitchen it's time to bring eric up to speed he'll be angry but it doesn't feel right to keep him in the dark about rory i'll grab a dozen donuts to soften the blow Furious Monkeys is busy tapping and swiping on her phone when I arrive at the sheriff's station. Care for a donut? Shockingly, my offer receives real live eye contact. Set a jelly field next to me. I'm only two coconuts from leveling up and can't stop now. <laughs> Furious Monkeys. I place a jelly donut on top of the stack of reports next to her and make my way to Eric's office. I'm not looking forward running into Paulson, but she doesn't seem the type to say no to a donut. Can I interest you in a donut, deputy? It's acting sheriff, and yes. She reaches into the box and grabs a large bear claw. Now to test the waters with my news. Hate to be the one to tell you, but I'm pretty sure Rory Bombay is behind Gerhardt Klang's murder. I think he purposely set up Eric to take the fall. Her mouth is already full and she chews slowly as my words sink in. She swallows and wipes the crumbs from the corner of her mouth with the back of her hand. You got any evidence? Since I can't really tell her about cursed runestones or psychic messages, I'm left with a gigantic pile of nothing. Not yet. Well, if it's a setup, it's a good one. The trace came back on that needle today, victim's blood inside. The outside had been wiped clean. I'm afraid we'll have to charge Harper, but I'm going to keep him in our holding cell as long as I can. County jail is no place for a sheriff. If we don't find something to clear his name before the holidays, my hands will be tied. He'll have to transfer to county and await his trial. If ever there was a gloomier sentence, I haven't heard it. I'll find something. I'm sure I'll find something. As I turn to leave the office, she calls out, Moon, you shouldn't tell him about Bombay. He's like a powder keg back there, and I'm afraid that name will light the match. All right for now, but if I get you some evidence, you'll, I mean, you know he's innocent, right? My opinion isn't the law. Like I told you before, I have to follow the evidence just like the sheriff would if he was in my position. Copy that. At least there's a hint of apology in her tone. That's something. The hallway outside the holding cell seems narrower, the painting more disheartening, and the air colder than I remember. Eric gazes toward me as I walk in front of the bars, but his eyes don't light up. I brought you donuts. He laughs once. The sound is sharp and hollow. My last meal, eh? <clears throat> Tilting the box, I pass it through the bars and set it softly on the cement floor. Absolutely not. In fact, it's a celebration. His eyes dart up and the weight of his hope threatens to break my heart. You found something? Yes, but I can only tell you if you promise to remain calm. He stands and stalks to the bars. I don't know if I can make that kind of promise, Moon. You have to. Acting Sheriff Paulson made me promise not to tell you, but I can't stand seeing you like this. Look, they've got my jersey with the Vic's blood, the murder weapon from my gear bag, and I've got no alibi. 
Even if it's more bad news, it's better than nothing, I guess. I hope you still feel that way 30 seconds from now. I take a deep breath and ignore the burning ring of fire on my left hand. I'm sure the universe at large is screaming at me to keep my secrets, but when I look into those helpless blue eyes, I'd do anything to change his fate. It's Rory Bombay. My extra senses pick up on the building rage and I step away from the bars. Eric kicks the box of donuts, grabs the quilt his mother brought him off the bench and throws it across the tiny cell. What has this guy got against me? Oh, that guy. I swallow and whisper, me. His wild, fierce anger vanishes faster than a Sedona sunset. You? Don't you dare try to take responsibility for that madman. I step toward the cell and place my hands on the bars. It's true. If I'd just given him what he'd wanted, I choke back the tears and try to continue. He would have never come after you. He would have taken what he wanted from me, picked up the stupid relics from McClintock's farm, and you'd still be sheriff. Eric exhales loudly, and he places his hands lovingly over each of mine. I still am sheriff. You and I are the best crime-solving team north of the Gulf of Mexico. Let's stop feeling sorry for ourselves and put our giant brains to use. I lean against the bars and our lips meet in a passionate kiss as a, as a tear trickles down my cheek. My mood ring has no time for lovey-dovey nonsense. The heat is so intense it feels as though my ring finger is on fire. I pull my hands away and look down. Ainsley has a gag in her mouth and she's weeping. I don't need to see any more of the image to know that Rory has taken her. My new commitment to honesty is going to have to be shelved. Eric leans against the bars with concern. What's wrong? Not to toot my own horn, but usually you don't pull away from a kiss like that. When in doubt, lied out. Yeah, sorry, the kiss was amazing. Something popped into my head. I need to talk to Silas. I hold a hand to my head as though the pressure can force a solution to the surface. Should I send someone in to clean up the donuts? <laughs> Eric blushes shamefacedly. No, nah, I'm going to eat them off the floor as penance. <laughs> That's where I am now, Moon. Will you be back today? Let's say by morning. It's a bit of a drive out to Silas's place, and I'm not sure how long I'll take to get the how long it'll take to get the information I need. Do you want breakfast from the diner or the patisserie? The pastry play. How about you surprise me? A weak smile touches his lips. I turn and march toward the door and hear him call after me. Don't do anything stupid. Man knows me too well. There's no time to actually drive out to see Silas. A call will have to do. I put the phone on speaker and drive, hoping for psychic guidance. Good afternoon, Miss Moon. How may I be of assistance? Silas, Rory has taken one of the girls as bait. I know he won't hurt her yet. There's something to those artifacts in that picture of Ainsley's. In the picture, in that picture of Ainsley. I need your expertise. We have to figure out what he wants and give it to him. I hate to let him get away again, but I don't want anyone's blood on my hands. I shall meet you at the bookshop. Bring the photograph. Yeah, about that. As I drive back to the bell book and candle, I bring Silas up to speed on the unholy events at McClintock's Divine Dairy. He assures me that with minor coaching, I should be able to recall every detail of the photograph. Since there's no time to get, uh, no time to get Mr. Knudsen to develop another print, my psychically enha enhanced recall is our best bet. Twiggy has already left for the day, so I don't have to update her on the Thanksgiving menu change up. My dad and Amaryllis 
You can bring dinner rolls. I can't believe Twiggy thought I couldn't make a pie. I mean, technically, I'm not the one making a pie, but potato, potato. And that's all of chapter 14. And I got a dry, dry mouth and nothing to drink, so that's going to have to do. For now, dear squirrels. <laughs> Booger, look at this hair. <laughs> it's clean. That's all I've got to say about that. Love y'all bunches. Hope to see it live at five tomorrow. He's sweet. Don't be ugly. Bye-bye.